Hello and welcome again to my physics video lecture supplement series. In today's video, I wanted to revisit um, really a pair of videos from before. And actually, um, today's video is again going to be a pair of videos. So um, what I have on the board beside me is a little diagram of the Atwoods machine. Um, and before I made a couple of videos discussing uh, the real versus the ideal Atwood machine uh, concerning rotational dynamics, specifically the acceleration of the two masses. And so today I wanted to revisit that and consider it from a different angle, which is the conservation of energy with a real and with an ideal Atwood's machine. So in this first part of the series, um, I'm going to discuss the conservation of energy for an ideal Atwood's machine, and then I'll revisit it for a real Atwood's machine. So uh, basically the question that is posed is, suppose we start with an Atwood's machine that looks like this. And suppose that the larger of the two masses, the larger one is 2.5 kilograms, the smaller one is 2.0 kilograms. Suppose that we allow the larger of the two to fall a distance of one meter, and, and therefore the smaller of the two to rise a distance of one meter. Uh, in the case of both the real and eventually the ideal, uh, excuse me, in the case of the ideal Atwood's machine, and eventually the real Atwood's machine, uh, what kind of energy are we going to have for each component of the machine, and how fast is the final speed going to be after this motion? So, to solve this, we should start out with conservation of energy. So, conservation of energy says that the initial energy of our system and the final energy of our system should be equal, provided that there's no work being done on the system by um, either propulsive or dissipative forces. And so we have a basically a frictionless rope and a frictionless pulley. Um, so what this means is that all the energy in the system is going to be some combination of the energy of this mass and the energy of this mass. So initially nothing is moving and so all the energy is concentrated in M2 and it's all gravitational potential energy. So in our initial case we have M2G and I'm just going to go ahead and label the height as delta H. In other words, I'm going to take um, that one meter fall distance to be such that the second mass is basically arriving at the ground after one meter. And that's going to be equal to um, the total energy right as this thing is arriving at the ground. So when this thing is arriving at the ground, first of all, this other mass will have risen by one meter. So I'm going to have M1 G delta H. <clears throat> Second of all, both masses are going to be moving and they're both going to be moving with the same speed. So plus one half M1 V final squared plus one half M2 V final squared. <coughs> so that's our conservation of energy equation. Uh, that is the equation that we need to solve then for final speed. So we need to pull everything with a speed in it to one side of the equation. We'll call that the left side. And everything else that does not have a speed in it needs to go to the other side of the equation, the right side. 
So what that's going to look like is um, basically we can subtract this term from both sides and then note that um, if a equals b, then b equals a. So what that means is that I've rearranged it to look like this. 1 half m1 d1 squared plus 1 half, uh, sorry, 1 half m1 v final squared plus 1 half m2 v final squared. It's going to look like m2 g delta h minus m1 g delta h. Okay, well now it's maybe worth arranging this equation such that all of these terms are distributed, or maybe I should say undistributed. So for example, on this side, both terms have a g delta h in it. So uh, on the right hand side, I basically have m2 minus m1 times g delta h. On the left hand side, I have a v final squared. Uh, that is what I'm ultimately going to be solving for. And so I should just move everything else over here. So I have half m2 plus m1. So if I want to solve for the final speed, I need to divide both sides by 1 half m2 plus m1. So m2 plus m1. And dividing by a half is the same as multiplying by 2. So that gets rid of everything here. And what we're left with is the final speed squared. So I need to take a square root of both sides. And there we have it. That's the um, final speed in this non-ideal case. So now we can plug some numbers in. And that means that the final speed is going to be the square root of 2 times 2.5 kilograms minus 2.0 kilograms divided by 2.5 kilograms plus 2.0 kilograms. And all of that times 9.8 meters per second squared times the change in height, which is one meter. Okay, so whip out your calculator, plug all those things in, and what I come up with is 1.48 meters per second squared. So in the ideal case, V final is approximately 1.48 meters per second squared. All right, well, what about the energies? What are the energies going to be equal to initially and finally? Um, to get that, we might as well go back up to our top equation and just plug the numbers in there. So this one is, uh, initially, we have 2.5 kilograms times 9.8 meters per second squared times 1 meter. And that is the initial energy 2. So um, this is equal to uh, 24.5 joules. All right, well that's our initial energy for um, the bigger mass. Everything else is zero initially, so all we need then is uh, the final energies. So for the bigger mass, the final energy is just this term, and so 
E uh, final for number two is one half times uh, 2.5 kilograms times uh, whatever it is, the speed squared. Speed squared, the uh, speed was 1.48, so we have 1.48 meters per second, say meters per second squared. So that is going to be uh, 2.72. Okay, and then for the final of number one, basically we need to plug in here and plug in here. So that's going to be 2 kilograms times 9.8 meters per second squared times 1 meter plus half of 2 kilograms times 1.48 meters per second squared. So plug in numbers for all of this, and what you end up with is that E final for number 1 is approximately uh, 21.78. Joules. So as a last little double check to make sure that everything else has been done correctly, we can add the final energies together and see if they're equal to the initial energy. And in fact, 2.72 plus 21.78 gives me 24.5. So we've successfully conserved energy in this problem. Okay, so that's it for the... Um, ideal version of the Atwoods machine.